All right, let's get to our first review. It's going to be a good time. Okay, first off, I, I think I'm going to make a comic book, and, I, and I'm just going to, I got to poke it a little bit. Matthew Rosenberg, you're awesome. James Tining, you're awesome. Clear, clearly, we're big fans of the creators who make these amazing comic books, right? Where are you going with this? I want to know, what is the longest title we can make for a comic book? Maybe is that the key to making a successful book? Because we have Something is Killing the Children. And right. today we're talking about what's the furthest place from here? Yep. There are, I think the names of comics are getting longer. What are your thoughts, Ryan? That's six words. There's Meanwhile, Spawn. That's one word. Ghost Rider. Two words. You know what I'm X-Men. saying? X-Men. That's like one and a yeah. half words. <laughs> this is, it's like, where should we go? Do we know where? Is it too late? Based on a true story. Part one of six. The Comic Tom story. Exactly. That's where we're headed. All right, here we go. We have what's the furthest place from here? An image comic book that is fantastic, world building, and you got to add it to your poll list. And there are five issues and we're not going to spoil it all, but we're going to talk about it right here, right now. What do we got, Ryan? This is such an interesting cover for an issue one of a, of a book. Like this is going to be the image that sells you on the, on the series. Not a great choice. And this is just a broken down, beat up, post-apocalyptic record store. Is that what it says there? It is. You Something know, records. It's kind of one of those things. When you're, when you're making the comic yourself, you kind of just do what you want. What tickles your fancy, right? This is written by Matthew Rosenberg with Thank art you. by Tyler Boss. And this right here is a world that is... Occupied only by children. And you know what? We have to just give credit where credit's due. The world building in as little as five issues is immense. And being that I've only read three of them, because I had to stop, and I'll tell you why I had to stop. It's something that not many creators are able to do well. It is kind of impressive seeing how, uh, what they're building here. And at first... My impression reading the first issue was like, I'm confused. There's a lot of kids. There's a, there's a lot happening. There's a lot that's already happened. I'm not 100% sure what I'm reading or what's going on, but I like what I'm, you know, I, I like it. I don't know if that, does that make sense? Like you Absolutely. read something, it can be confusing, but you can still be enjoying it in spite of not knowing everything. We are in a world that has different uh, gangs of children occupying it. These children were brought to these communities, these small factions, if you would. And they were raised together in a world that is dystopian. Yeah. Uh, Post-apocalyptic, I would even say. Dystopian implies that there's like... Yeah, that's true. Other people. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, this, this is, is... This is not that. This is clearly a burnt out remnants of, a, of society and yeah. crumbling buildings. And these kids live in a record store, in an abandoned record store. And their entire life is based around music. That's right. And their whole goal is to find a record that can, like, they can identify with for the rest of their life and, like, symbolizes who they are and, and you know, their personhood. That's right. This is, that's actually the third uh, point of the synopsis that I wanted to highlight is that music is a theme of this book. Matthew Rosenberg has a whole, like, you know, writer's commentary, artist commentary in the back of this comic that he dives deep into music. And you may be surprised, but... Although Ryan and I do bond over some music tastes, specifically funk music, a little bit of hip hop, a little bit of bad dad rock. We both like to, oh, yeah. to chat about. We make about. fun of a lot of the same music too. We do. We do. Yeah. But we also enjoy it because sure. it's fun to laugh at, right? Yes. Ryan is not a fan of music. You actually have told me before that you hate music. That's, I don't hate it. You hate the feeling that it gives you, that good feeling. You I, hate any, that. any good feelings I just don't like. You don't like it. That's true. No, but for real though, like, you're not a music person. No. Why? I, I, I wish I knew why. There's something missing inside of my soul. <laughs> but, but like, I could think of everybody I've ever grown up with who is always excited to talk about bands or albums that are coming out. And they always grew up walking around with their headphones on or blaring music from their rooms. Mm. And Did that's you ever play any me. like instruments growing up or anything? Uh, I played, uh, uh, played heavy air quotes on that. I played... Enough guitar to get fine yeah. fine arts credit in high school, and then you never did it. Played guitar in high school. I played. I looked up some tabs. Okay. And I fiddled around with it enough to trick the teacher into thinking I knew what I was doing. And wow, then I never I've touched never heard it again. this. I didn't know you knew anything on guitar. 
uh, no, not even chords. Okay. So I was just, just like plunking along. Just barely getting by. Like freaking Final Fantasy music. <laughs> and then I dropped the guitar forever and I think that's never a big deal. Back. Like if you grow up. Except for Guitar Hero. If you start playing music as like as a kid, you know, guitar and drum and things like that, I think that's a, a big part of your discovery of music. Um, but it sounds like from Matthew Rosenberg that he was just, pl- you know, earplugs, ear- earplugs, um, mm. like headphones in all the time and in, in this commentary. And he was trying to channel that um, way that people utilize music to accompany other tasks. It sounds yeah. like even while he, while, while drawing and writing. I'll do music at the gym. Sure. I will listen to music while I'm driving. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of it. One of the first things that we bonded over was our mutual l- liking, but understanding that it's bad of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Sure. You yes. know what I mean? Like, like when someone says, oh, Red Hot Chili Peppers are not a good band. I will not I, fight for them. I will, I will, I I will give them that point. Sure. But there's something there. But there's, like, some, gets, there's something it's the that, funk it's the, DNA. <laughs> That gets me in my soul. And there is something there musically inside of my soul. That you know what it is? What they call the, it? What? It actually is around your kidneys. It is. It's called the ketus. Oh, good, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the ketus is what you like. No, that, actually, if I could just like splice Anthony Ketus out of the entire <laughs> and just just give me Chi, uh, Flea and Chad and John on, on the instruments. Yeah, you're good. I'd be, Anthony Ketus kills right actually <laughs> for me. That's a whole different conversation. Oh, but. man. I want to hear Ryan do a Anthony Ketus no. uh, uh, a voice here. <laughs> Can I get you to give me a little of something? Uh, Just a little bit. Give me a taste of your uh, best Anthony Kiedis impression. Uh, Come on, Danny California. Danny Getting California. Let me hear it. Do you channel it? That song's You're so live. Over 115 people here today. Come on. I am live. Getting born in the state of uh, Mississippi. That's the, that's the lamest. Oh, no, God. but find something in there. <laughs> Ryan, comic fam, I want to see you in the chat. Let's give him some motivation. I want to hear him do his best Anthony Kiedis. Get born in the state of Mississippi. That was, that, was more, that was more like Metallica or something. That was, that was not Kiedis. You put me on the spot. That was you, bad. You do a little dance and you drink a little water. Oh, God. <laughs> see? All right, all right, just, we're getting back. We're talking about just, comic books. Just comic cut fam. him out of the band and give me the music, the okay. sounds. We're talking about music. Can't write lyrics. One of the reasons why I want to talk about this is because um, there was something interesting that took place with this comic book. There was a variant, an exclusive that's kind of hard to get. How many did you guys get at the shop? I don't even know if we got any of them, to be honest. You may I have know gotten people, one. People ordered them. You could all, you could order this through the catalog. Like it comes with a, is it a seven inch? Is that the is that what they're called? Yeah, a seven it's inch? a micro. It's a small record. Yeah. That yeah, comes, seven inch series. Yeah. It comes with a record that you you can play, and it's supposed to have. It's right there. What four songs? Is yeah. that two songs? Uh, it looks like it's, it's two songs. Two songs, and it says that they were. It, it's interpreted, so it's like they have two different, different songs versions. that someone covered, probably because you know you can't just like get the rights to those I guess. easily. Yeah. So there's two different songs you're supposed to listen to while um, reading this book, and this isn't the first time that we've heard this, uh, or rather, we've seen this happen. We Live was another comic book that really tried to bring in this okay. mixed media experience. But the way they did it is they just uploaded the songs to YouTube and there were skews throughout the pages and you scanned it right. and it played some music as they're, as you know, as you're reading about the characters. There was crowd. another Aftershock book that did that too. So um, I have actually stopped reading this series after issue three because one, it was really good. Like we're going to get into a little bit more, but I realized I got to listen. I got to listen to the music while reading this. I want to experience it right because it's that good. It's, it's, it's so it's fun. The, the fact that we're following a bunch of like kids was the first thing that made me go, I don't know if I'm going to like this because the kids is a little exaggerated. They're, yeah, they're, they're teenagers, teenagers yeah, right? They're older. Something happens to them when they turn 18 and they're like either banished or abducted or killed. That's right. Something happens to them. It's not, it's not quite clear. So the main characters of, the, of this book are all, I would say teenagers. Yes. Kids is a little misleading. That's right. That implies like elementary school yeah true but there are kids in this book sure so i mean but we're following a group that are a bit older and what we're seeing in this picture is this group who lives at the record store meeting a different gang of teenagers children they wear these pig masks and yeah it is uh they live about in a bank I yeah and, and, uh, they live in a bank and the colors are great and the pacing is superb and these are thick books too. You got to point that out too. This book is like I'm getting to it right here because okay, um, okay. I wanted to showcase the different um, 
this right here is just one example of meeting a different group of characters, but each issue, really, you meet a different gang of kids, teenagers. Sure. And each have their own strangeness in their development. They've got a theme. They've all got their own, like, distinct location. That's right. This is like a road trip apocalypse kind of story. Oh, ooh, good. I'm glad. So you, yeah. this is why I wanted to get to this part because these this book is like mm. 50 pages or something, like 40 pages. They're five dollar issues. You pay an extra dollar for this book, but it's it's a thick book. I think it, it's it's less about the actual dialogue and progression of the story and more about the pacing because this right here is an example of three. It's three different pages, isn't it? Right. So they, this, there's like three, uh, basically the same image three different times, but two. Oh, you grabbed all three of them. Okay. And three. Just to give an example, this is six pages of comic art. You know? But it's it enough tells, to scare you, and these, these kids are camped out overnight. I guess we should clarify for the audio people. It's this group of our main characters are camped out just laying on the ground in the middle of the woods with nowhere to stay. And overnight, one of them wakes up and notices that a bunch of kind of humanoid looking creatures are slowly creeping in on them while they sleep. And looks like there's one of them right there. He's like on the pile of kids. Mm-hmm. They look like animals. Yeah. So but creepy. So yes, the, the book is long, but when you're opening up double page spreads over and over again and progressing the story in a matter of like three seconds, 20, you know, 10 seconds, it brings you in and it moves so damn quick. Also, the book is kind of sectioned off by chapters, and I love it. This is actually something that James Tynan kind of does in the start of most of the Something is Killing the Children books, where you have an intro, and then it hits you with... A big title page. Boom. Something is Killing the Children. I can hear the music. And the music. Dum, dum. Yeah. It's like Law and Order, dude. Law and Order? Like, boom. I, I think thinking, of Law and Order. I, I think I it's of uh, Insidious. Yeah, Every Insidious. Time. There's Absolutely. like really screeching violins and it's really scary horror music. I get That's that right. soundtrack in my head when I hear that. But every chapter is a new phase of the book. And I, I picked this up from like, I think issue three or four. I can't remember. But like, I just wanted to show an example of it. And also let you know that what we've noticed is over time, this negative space starts to get more distressed over over the as the, I get as the story sense, progresses. I get the sense there's some kind of image or message they're trying to convey with these chapter title pages. And it's very subtle. And I have no idea what that might be or if that's even a thing at all. But look at this. I wanted to highlight... Um, just the brilliance in communicating sound and the dialogue. The first thing that I wanted to mention was that there is a lot of different characters. And whenever you have individuals in their adolescence, right? Like you right. Know, younger, younger individuals, it is a slippery slope for me as a reader to like fall into a, I feel like uh, as a grown person writing kids dialogue, Brian, the, my, the, Bendis. the Bendis effect Bendis. is what yep. we talk about. And, and I don't mind Bendis. Bendis actually did the variant cover for issue one that I have. The uh, cover B for issue one is just a close up of that pig mask. What does he say he a lot? It. There's a line that he says a lot that you always complain about. Oh my goodness. It's like, what the heck is going on? I don't know. What is it? What the actual F? Yeah. What the actual F? Yeah. Nobody stop. says that. No one says that. Now. Don't ever use but that. But you see it. Also, like, people need to stop saying chef's kiss. Yeah. That bugs the hell out of me. What what is that? Oh, but dude, (laughs) maybe it's our bias, dude. We're like in our 30s now. Maybe this is how people talk and we're just. Uh, Yeah, I hate it. I I, I, I do not like it. Or the hand gesture, the chef's kiss, the people actually do it. Like, uh uh. Stop Mm -hmm. doing it. Stop saying it. Moving on. Don't do it. Moving on. So, um, this comic, I do not get that vibe. And if anything, I'm actually surprised how little I feel. Like it's being forced. If anything, you're being hit with so much dialogue that there's something that is pretty fun that um, that Matthew Rosenberg does. This is a he a, layers the text. A three person creative team. We also have Hassan Atmain yes. Alao on lettering, who's a, a letterer that I really like. Gosh, and kills it, kills it. The yeah, the overlapping uh, speech bubbles are really cool. But also in that image you were just showing with him in the hallway. If yeah. you can go back to that one right where. Here. Yeah, look at that. Oh, great. Yeah, this is a great example. This is an example. Something super creative. We have, static. We have a character hearing static coming from down the hall, but look we, at this. he's right here. Yeah, it's hard to notice. But when he's, you're reading it in, in hand, it's, it's clear. Yeah. This right here is, um, is static. It's just, been, it's just been blown up, so it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of diluted. It's but like this a is speech all static. Bubble. 
coming from a door down the hall and he walks towards it and you can see the bubble kind of over like right over here. the top of the door and inside it is it's not a white speech bubble it's just filled with static from like a tv screen right here look at this this is a speech ah, bubble but it's all static that's so cool it's brilliant so the 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 lettering and and the choice of like when to use letters and not when to use sounds and and imagery for sounds it's just really on point um we have a person who's part of the group who goes missing and this is this, this group of uh and we've barely even talked about the plot and <laughs> yeah. we don't have to though right but but this faction needs to go and find their group member they also are led to believe that maybe there's more in this world than what they have grown to know and there are these beings called the strangers that are kind of lurking in the background yeah. pulling strings and we don't really know what they're there for but we do know that they have influence on everything they're controlling some of these situations and we're led to believe that all of these now teenagers growing into adulthood before something happens to them and they you know die or get banished that they were brought there by this other being in a world that's post-apocalyptic. This is like United States. We have helicopters in the streets kind of situation. And American records that they are clearly flipping through. This is, it seems to be a, a U.S. record store. Yes. With a lot of, if you look closely, you can recognize the albums and the artists. And I, I'm assuming for somebody who really loves music, that would be a really cool <laughs> sequence to read. I'm thinking so. So um, I think the big reveal, which we don't even know is a reveal yet, and we're not going to talk about the specifics, is how did they get to this point? How did this future take place the hints within the five issues i love it is my favorite part of this run yeah it is out there it is a shocking twist that you're not really sure if we're seeing what actually took place or not but i'm in it to win it i want to experience this book with the record matthew rosenberg well done there's a spot in the back. I sent you a picture of uh there's a letters page or an interview with the creators in the back of issue one when uh they're asking, they're asking each other. That's kind of like a discussion between the creators, and they're asking each other, "What sort of records do you listen to while you read comics?" And I, I sent you a photo yeah, you, of you it. You sent me a lot, and you, you were you weren't impressed. I sent Tom a photo <laughs> of it, and I was like, "Ha! I uh, read comics with earplugs in to block out all noise. Like I don't listen to music. I don't listen to anything because I want to focus." Like the opposite effect. You yeah. don't even want to be tainted a little bit. Mm -mm. You want to have the, the full side. Do you were listen to like? Um, I can't focus. If there's music on, I can't focus. I'll listen to the music, even if be, there's no words. It has to be a certain type of music for me to um, to be able to enjoy at the same time, because you're right. It's really tough to to keep it organized and to read. It puts read me in a different mood or whatever, even if it's like Bach or Beethoven or some kind of super classical old stuff. Like, I, I can't do it. I can't focus. All right, comic fam, we want to know your thoughts. Have you read this book? Have you read What's the Furthest Place from Here? Also, do you think that comic book titles need to be longer than they've become? We want to know your thoughts. Let us know in the comment section below. This book has hit 20 bucks. Let off the gas. Colin Fennelis, you're really gutting for some Jack for the goodness. $75 cover price on this. Don't overbid. But if somebody wants it, we got it. 